It's about time that you... You started to earn your cape. Okay. Good. Let's go get your pole then. Now, you do have a fishing pole, don't you? I sure do. Uncle Jose made me one. Good. Well, let's go get it then. Go catch us some fish. <laughs> yeah. I'll mount up and lift you on when you're ready. down to the river near here. We shouldn't go too far from camp. Oh, okay. You feeling better? I know you was a little sick. Oh, I'm fine. You're a brave kid. So, just like you. Well, I don't know about brave. I ain't much of a kid no more. Though your mama might disagree. There are a few other women, I guess. What do you mean? Uh, I'm just talking silly. <laughs> been a tough few weeks up in that snow. I like the snow. Yes, but not like that. When are we going back to the other camp? The one near Blackwater? Yeah. Well, we're not. This is our spot. For now, anyway. Why? I forgot a storybook there. We left so quick. Well, I'm sure someone can get you another storybook. Really? When? Well, <laughs> we'll see. A fish to catch first. Yeah. Right fast, Uncle Arthur. <laughs> All right. spot as any. Where should we stand, Uncle Arthur? Down by the shore. Come on, follow me. Just by the water there? You mean? Wait to get started. But first, we need some bait. I'm gonna use some cheese. Cheese? The bellier the better. Now, cast your line. Swing the rod back over your shoulder and bring it forward in a smooth motion. Use your wrist, not your elbow. Like that? That's it, good. All we do now, Jack, is wait for a fish to take the bait. How do I know when I've got a bite? Well, if you feel the tip of your fishing rod just twitching, don't yank it yet. That just means one's nibbling. But if you feel a hard tug, that's a fish going for the bait, so yank hard to hook it. Something's tugging at your rod, Uncle Arthur. There we go. Pull him in! You see him fighting there, Jack? That's when you gotta be careful. You, you'll break the line. Best to wear him out first before you try to reel him in. Now, it seems like he's taking a rest now. I'm gonna try reeling him in nice and steady. This is a great fishing spot. Don't jinx it, kid. Thank you. 
You okay there? I think so. This is hard. Why am I not catching any? Just be patient. This reminds me, I taught another boy to fish once, a long time ago. You mean Lenny? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. This was long before I met Lenny. Long before you was even born. Look, Jack, it's a smallmouth bass. It's almost as small as you. We should really throw these smaller ones back. Give them a chance to grow up a bit. Can I take a break from fishing? I want to make something. Okay. I'm gonna pick some of those red flowers. I'll be right back. To look at that spot. Fish on the line. You got a stick at things, Jack. This is clearly the spot for smallmouth bass. Fishing sure is boring. I know. Boring as hell. But then, something happens. You can get food for days. Really? If you're lucky. But until then, you just sit, wait, try not to worry. It's good for you. It's good for you? I guess. Huh. Hey, look at this. Hey, what? This necklace I made. Necklace? For Mama. Sure. What a fine young man. And in such complex circumstances. Arthur, isn't it? Arthur Morgan? Who are you? Yes, Arthur Morgan. Vanderlyn's most trusted associate. You've read the files. Typical case. Orphan street kid seduced by that maniac's silver tongue and matures into a degenerate murderer. Agent Milton? Agent Ross. Pinkerton Detective Agency. Seconded to the United States government. Nice to finally meet. We know a lot about you. Do you? You're a wanted man, Mr. Morgan. There's $5,000 for your head alone. $5,000? For me? Can I turn myself in? We want Vanderlyn. Old Dutch. I haven't seen him for months. That's so? Because I heard a guy fitting his description robbed a train belonging to Leviticus Cornwall up near Granite Pass. Oh, ain't that a little old-fashioned nowadays? Apparently not. Listen. This is my offer, Mr. Morgan. Bring in Vanderlyn, and you have my word you won't swing. Oh, I ain't gonna swing anyways, Agent. Uh... Milton. You see, I haven't done anything wrong. 
Aside from not playing the games to your rules. Spare me the philosophy lesson. I've already heard it from Mac Callender. Mac Callender? He was pretty shot up by the time I got to him. So really, it was more of a mercy killing. Slow, but merciful. <laughs> you enjoy being a rich man's toy, dear. I enjoy society, flaws and all. You people venerate savagery, and you will die. Savagely, all of you. Oh, we're all gonna die, Agent. Some of us, sooner than others. Good day, Mr. Morgan. Goodbye. Enjoy your fishing, kid. While you still can. <laughs> Who are they? No one to worry about. No one at all. Come on. Let's pick up your things and get home. <laughs> it's getting late, Jack. Your mother would be worried. Let's head back. I don't like it here anymore. Why did you lie about where Uncle Dutch is? Because... Well... Because those are disagreeable men, and I don't want them to hurt him. What did they mean about Mac? Is he in jail? Uh, no, I don't uh, think so. I hope he's just fine where he is. Like I said, don't worry about them. The world is full of disagreeable men. That's why you got all of us to protect you from folk like them. Now, how about that necklace you made? You still got it, right? Yeah, I got it. Good. But did you like fishing? It was... okay, I think. It's a lot of waiting around. It is. <laughs> This necklace. Ain't that pretty? Ain't I the luckiest? Did you thank Uncle Arthur? No need. We had a good time. What's wrong? Nothing. Just met some folk. I better go speak with Dutch. Okay. Hey, you did real fine, kid. Thanks. We got a problem. What? I just met some guys out near the river. A fella named, uh, um, Milton and, uh, I don't remember the other fella's name. Ross. Milton and Ross. And? and they are employees of the Pinkerton Detective Agency. And they know about the train and they know we're here. Were you followed back here? No. They know we're near here. And they want you, Dutch. They offered me my freedom in exchange, they did. Why didn't you take it? <laughs> Very funny. Well, what do we do now? I say we do nothing, just yet. They're just trying to scare us into doing something stupid. We have turned a corner. We survived them mountains. We just need to stay calm.
boy. Easy. Be with you momentarily. How can one crook raise so much hell? May I help you? Thank you for your help. Morning. Get a few cents? Uh, okay, boy. Let's Can't go. you help a fellow out? What's wrong with you? Huh? Move! Somebody help me out. I was in the army. You what the hell is wrong? Welcome, sir. You new patient? Snake oil. You have no idea the trouble I had to go through to get that. If you're gonna want to stay sharp, I should have a stock available. Look at my catalog. Let's just see what you got. Okay, maybe next time. Well, let's see what you got. Sure, what you got? Well, try you next time. You ain't been through in a while. Have a look around.
Some of the fellers who play poker down at Flatneck Station said they had some clergyman in. Drunk out of his mind. Righty. Let's see what you're selling. Thanks. Love this weather. Brings the ladies out in the flush. How you do? You good for mm, nothing, cheap glory. bastard. I here no more. I won that game fair and square. Yeah. Fair and square, my ass! You heard me, fair and well, square. Well, why don't you let your pistol do the talking? Fine, Bobby. Your move. Good to see you. What can I do for you? Oh, wait. You're that fellow who had to fight with Tommy outside of Smithfields? Yep. People are still talking about that fight. I ain't. Well, fair enough. Neither's Tommy. Anyway, how can I help you today? I've had my fair share of people. Better luck next visit. Hello. Here. Yep. Move out the damn way. Things are hard enough without you raising hell around here. I've seen you around here before. To kill, but got something they in mind? It. They weren't Christians, so I sent them to hell. They should have thanked me. All you fools should thank me. No more around here. Ain't nothing. Nothing nice. Just more goddamn America. More goddamn shops. More goddamn prissy women in men's clothing and women in women's clothing. My grandpa used to wear mutton chops. Men. You look a little like him. Bessie. She could skin a bear with her teeth, so help me God. Look at you. 
Y'all make a fella sick! Stop What's bullshit. wrong with you, fool? Well, look at y'all. I look can do you. just about anything with this My hair, man. I reckon. And it was goddamn men. You ain't men. The whole lot of you look at you. You ain't men. All you right. ain't even women. That's you ready for anything, I reckon. You're... Thank you. You're Good. something. Careful, big man. Out of my way. You're revolting. <laughs> Thanks, Mister. A hand here. Go ahead, tell your mama for a lack here. I take it easy. I got a little bag of Smarten him up, will ya? Oh, hell. Wasting my time anyway. Oh. You could have stepped in. I thought you had it covered. Just wait till you're old. I'll be at camp if you need me. Help a blind man. A dollar for your future. A dollar for your fate. Learn about tomorrow. Be not afraid. I see only true things. Take this. Make your final moments your best moments, sir. No glory and forget about shame. Well, okay then. Thank you, I guess.
I know how to work with good people, Seamus, and I work in the right way. Well, they all say that. I never met an idiot that called himself one. Hi, this is Seamus. He's our new partner. I ain't no such thing. Prospective new partner, if he likes us. Liking ain't the problem. Trusting is, as I said. Keep your voices down. I don't want my boss hearing. This is a sideline. Of course. Look at us. Honest as the day is long. Exactly. I'll tell you what. Let us prove ourselves. <laughs> prove ourselves? To this clown? What you talking about? Good day, Hosea. Good luck with your business dealings. Listen, he's rough and ready and quick with his tongue, but I swear you can trust him and trust me. I'm an old man. You're not old, Seamus. I'm old enough. And you know why I ain't dead? You don't trust idiots. Exactly. We're not idiots. Let us prove it to you. Okay. I'll tell you what. Arthur! Old Bob Crawford and his boys just bought a beautiful stolen stagecoach from upstate. It's in their barn. Now you go get that, and then we can work together. Who's old Bob Crawford? An acquaintance of mine. So you want us to take out your competition? Well, he, he's not just an acquaintance, but a cousin. By marriage, I also want to see if you boys got what it takes. Now you survived that. Where is he? Well, he's in a farmhouse just northwest of here called Karma de Dell. That's just up the train tracks as you're heading up towards Fort Wallace. There's also some money in that house, but that's your business, not mine. But don't kill nobody. Folks know we ain't intimate no more, and they'll know it was me. But you're fine with us robbing your cousin. By marriage. And yes, I'd love it. You heard the man. Let's go rob his cousin. By marriage. 